Alright, so today we're going to talk about how a website works and why JavaScript is important. Um, to start off with, we're going to make sure everybody understands uh, how a standard website works and a little bit about how a name turns into an address and how it makes a request to a server. Um, anytime we talk about websites, we always start off with the cloud or the internet, depending on who you talk to and what you're doing with. Um, we have a server. In this case, it is a web server. And we have a client, a browser. The basics of any web page are HTML, CSS, JavaScript. When you when you decide you want to visit a web page, uh, you type in a location. Uh, for now, we'll use the world's best website, rdmwikipedia.com. When you type in this address, uh, this is like telling somebody, go to my house, uh, with no other reference. How this works is your browser, through your network, which is uh, a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing, if you need to look that up, uh, Google is your friend. When you decide to type in an address, you're going to go out to what's called the DNS servers. DNS takes the address you typed in and converts it to a physical address, like a street address on the map. We're going to take translate to an IP address. When you type in this address, you send out rdmfinity.com, the DNS then returns, you send out that request, the DNS then returns the address to the browser. Your browser then knows where to go look for this website. Uh, through the magic of networking and routing and uh, complex technology, browser then knows to go to this web server. This web server then processes the request you sent in. Uh, it does that via a web server, uh, web server application or program, whatever you want to call it, uh, whether it be Apache, IIS, uh, Light, HTTPD, There are thousands of them, and the options short. We're not going to get into the data about which one's better. Uh, the request comes in, the web server processes the request, and then sends back the resource you requested. Could be a resource, could be an image, could be multiple resources, could be a web page, the five images on it, the link that was on it, uh, the icon, the style sheets, the JavaScript. Every one of those links on a standard page. A request to the server. So when you have a standard web page, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, we're going to call a very simple page. It's going to have an image, it's going to have some text, and a button that's processed via JavaScript. Uh, in the code of this page, uh, and we're just going to abbreviate for uh, these purposes, there's the standard HTML code, maybe a script tag. CSS tag, of course that's abbreviated for, uh, for purposes here. Um, inside the body tag there was also an image. So. so the web browser makes a request for the page, the web browser then interprets the code, it then downloads the script, the CSS, image, and any other code inside there that's not resident inside the one HTML file. So a website could consist of one or hundreds of calls to the server. Um, and then your browser interprets all of it and displays it accordingly. Um, that's how a web page works, just so we can go talk about what is JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the coolest things you'll ever talk about. JavaScript is a way to not only interact with customers on a uh, 
on the client side level, but uh, also provides very cool dynamic functionality to your web pages, and now on the server side too, uh, which is actually what started the conversation. Uh, JavaScript, uh, which we'll cover in a sec here. JavaScript has been around for a while, and it's uh, it's really come into its own over the past couple of years. Uh, JavaScript allows you to do very cool things like maybe slideshows on a web page. So you can scroll images on a web page without having to sc scroll horizontally or vertically with scroll bars. Uh, it allows you to provide touch elements on mobile devices now, like a swipe or a tap or multi-finger gestures. Um, JavaScript allows you to make calls to other servers to pull in content dynamically. So um, how many times have you been on a web page and you click something and the entire page refreshes? So you click on click on the link and a little wheel spins up top and spins up top and then the page finally comes back. Then you go to an even cooler website and you click on something and just a part of the page changes. This technology is called Ajax. Which is a cute little term for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, the XML, not so much anymore. Uh, it's given way to other communication technologies, which we'll discuss in further episodes later. Um, and this allows you to go out, request, make another request to the server, but without refreshing the entire client side of the page. Uh, very cool technology. Like I said, we'll, we'll have an in depth episode for this later. Um, so, JavaScript. Not only is it run on the client side, but now there's, a, now there's a way to actually run JavaScript on the server side. So, you have a standard web page, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. On the server side, you could have all sorts of program languages. This could be PHP, it could be ASP, it could be Java. There's a whole host of languages, and again, which one you prefer, which one's the best, is up to you. The latest greatest thing, which are which we're starting to develop on and perform some very cool tasks with, is called Node.js, which is JavaScript on the server. So not only do you get to use the code in your client now, but now you can reuse the same code on the server to make both of them communicate together. Um, you get uh, traditionally inside a browser, this is what's called sandboxed where you get to access the window, and that's it. Uh, on the server side, you get that expanded. You can access files. You can read from a disk. You can read from a database. Uh, you can do uh, long-running processes that would typically time out in a browser. Um, in general, that's the way a typical web page will work. Um, we're going to discuss more about JavaScript, Node.js, PHP, ASP, and uh, the way the Internet rules the world uh, in a later episode. But for now, I think that uh, that will cover our basis of how a web page works and the parts and pieces about what it's in. Thank you very much.